Welcome to Chris BI. My name's Chris Wagner, and today we're going to be going over how you can do targeted refreshes of tables inside your Power BI data set. Oh, let's go! Alliance is counting on you. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, turn on that alarm bell so you don't miss any future emission. We've got a data set in our Power BI service that we want we want to refresh it. Uh, we've got some challenges though. Either we've got some issues in our loads and something's not loading right, or we are trying to troubleshoot it, or we just need to refresh an individual table. Well, up until now, if I go into my data sets and I go click on data set and I want to refresh my uh, data god model v2 right here, I can go to settings, I click on settings. My only option here is if I'm going to schedule a refresh, is to refresh at a specific time and it refreshes the whole model. So, but that doesn't work for me, right? I need to be able to refresh one table. Like the rest of the tables in it are too much. I can't do that. It, it's just, I, I just need this one table refreshed. I can't wait for the others to refresh or I'm having issues with the others. Let me show you how you can do this, okay? So go back to your workspace here, right? And then we're gonna click on settings up in this upper corner here, all right? So settings, and then we're gonna be clicking on premium, all right? This is, now please note, this is a premium per user only function, functionality, right? So right here, we need this workspace connection right here for us to be able to connect in. This is called an XMLA endpoint, which allows you to connect in through various other tools to do uh, different functions with your data set. So you need to make sure that your administrators have XMLA turned on and that you have read and write enabled, okay? So when that's in place, what we're gonna do is you're gonna click on copy and you're gonna fire up SQL Server Management Studio, our good friend. We're gonna click on connect and we're gonna connect to analysis services, okay? So this guy right here, we're gonna, click connect analysis services, and we're gonna paste in our data sets. So it's, so it's gonna be right in the, the middle box here, right? So you're gonna have your, your server name is gonna be the workspace path. You're gonna make sure that you turn on Azure Active Directory with MFA, and then you're gonna put in your email address here. This has to be the uh, your your cloud authentication. So it's gonna always be your email address. It's never gonna be your, your Windows ID, okay? Because you're talking about connecting to something in the cloud. Okay, so make sure that you do that. Uh, this is the number one place where people screw up. Don't make this mistake, okay? So I've got all this stuff in here. I'm gonna click on connect. This is where you might be prompted to, uh, with MFA. You might be prompted with a, a splash screen asking you to sign in, that type of thing, but uh, I'm uh, I'm accustomed to presenting, so I made sure I did that already. Okay. So when I go out here, what do I see? I've got the server that I've connected to. That's the workspace. I've got all the different data sets that I'm connected to inside of here. And I can start to browse through them, okay? And I can do that by just like opening up uh, Data Gods Model V2, clicking uh, expanding the tables. And now I've got all of these, the tables are in the model. And from here, I have all the functionality that I have with analysis services to be able to go in and manage this content. So I could do refreshes, recalcs, all of that good stuff, right? So a refresh will bring in data, bring that all together. A recalc will ca recalculate all the, the calculations and measures, really kind of helps with performance, addresses any uh, join issues, that type of a thing, okay? So if I wanna do a refresh, and I'm gonna do something that's that's simple and easy, I'm gonna right click on a, uh, a small table, and in this case, I'm just doing dim date, and I'm gonna click on process table, all right? Now, what you're gonna see is it's gonna come up with process default. Um, you also have the option of process full, process just the data, process clear, or process defrag. There's two that you're gonna typically use, Number one, it's gonna be full, or number two, you're gonna use like a combination of clear and then full, okay? Um, so sometimes the reason you might do a clear is, let's say the, the data in your table is just 
it's foobar, right? Like uh, there's something wrong with it. You don't know what it is. It's, it's causing issues. So you're going to clear it all out and then you're going to reprocess it. But in this case, we're just going to do a process full. And I've got two options. I can click on OK here and this will run in process. Let's stop, wait, collaborate and listen. I said back with the brand new invention. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, flashbacks from the 90s. Uh, <laughs> we're instead of hitting OK, we're going to hit script. All right. What this is going to do is it's going to you can see what happens, right? It's going to generate all of the XMLA code necessary to do that refresh. OK, so I'm going to hit cancel here. And the reason I want to run uh, this XMLA code versus hitting run is this is going to give me more verbose error messages when it comes to refreshing this content. So once this is in place, I'm going to go up and I'm going to uh, or let's take a look at this really quick. Okay, so it generated the XML code. So what are we doing? We're doing a refresh. What type is it? It's going to be a full. What objects are we refreshing? On the database data god model v2, I'm refreshing the date dim. Okay. And to do that, I'm going to be clicking on the execute button right here. All right, execute. Now we can see that it's beginning to execute the query. This is going to start running. Does that not do it in zero? Oh, <laughs> zoom mode doesn't work. Okay. So it's going to run. And when it gets done, you're going to see this. Okay. Everything's going to have run successfully. So this is all good to go. All right. Now, hey, this is great. Um, what I always recommend people do, especially if you, you, you do a, a process on a table, is then you go back to your model process database and here it's very important to not do a process full if you do a process full here what's going to happen is the same thing that happens like in the power bi service where you refresh the entire model that's what this will do okay we don't want to do that we want to do a recalc okay so i change it to recalc and again i script it out the script generates over here now, in this case, I'm just going to run the recalc here so you can see what it's like when I run it. I click on OK. Now, remember when I ran the XMLA code, I got all sorts of detail, like in information just kind of flew by on the screen. If I had received an error, I'd be able to scroll back up and see all of the potential issues that may have caused inside of that, uh, inside of, you know, refreshing that data or doing a recalc. Um, uh, Honestly, I'm not sure I've ever had an issue on a recalc, so uh, you know, probably not a thing. But when you see how it processes right here, like this is just a nice GUI. This is information. This is good processing and successful, right? You get a little bit of information that comes out inside of uh, the details. Like it's actually, you'll see the, the MDX script that was executed, but that's about all you get, right? You don't get any additional information about what failed or what didn't okay so running the xmla scripts uh, are, are are super easy right like i didn't have to learn how to write xmla in fact i don't know how to write xmla i know how to use sql server management studio to write xmla and let it write it the xmla itself so um i'm gonna go and there's another cool thing you can do which is you can actually go in and you can process many tables at the same time. So let's say inside your model, you know what table is erroring out, right? Like you've gotten that error message, you know, you're, or you know there's an issue with it, but all the other tables in your model are fine and you wanna be able to refresh that. Well, here you can, right? Like you can't, you know, the, the, you have a broken table, but you know, the rest you wanna be able to refresh. So again, we go into our GUID for processing uh, our table, I'm going to go in and I can actually now select many tables that I'm going to want to refresh. So uh, I am going to purposely choose some uh, tables that I know to be small in nature. And so you'll be able to see what it's like when I process many of them. Again, not process, process, pressing. Okay, I'm processing, processing, I'm pressing script. And I see my XMLA gets written for me. So I hit cancel. I've got all my information here again. Now, I, what am I doing? It's a refresh. What type is it? It's a full refresh. What are my objects that I'm refreshing? Well, 
in my database, Data God Model V2. I've got dim currency, dim geography, dim organization, and dim product category that I'm going to be refreshing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit execute. You're going to see that the query is starting to execute. Information is starting to flow along, right? You can see all this stuff is starting to come out. As I scroll down, oh, oh now, it's, now it's finished. Again, this is super helpful so that if you have many issues in your loads, let's say I had issues with two or three of my tables, I'd be able to see a lot of those error messages inside of the, the, this processing, and it wouldn't just be this one generic error code. Now, a point of order in Microsoft, maybe someday we can get to this, that'd be great. Um, if you have an error on a table, it's gonna tell you the error, it, the first error that it encounters. The challenge here is if you have multiple errors on the table, you have to run this multiple times uh, in order to like find out all the issues. Like, oh, your source system dropped five fields. Uh, that means five executions to come up with the five fields that were dropped. All right, so not great. Tabular error three allows you to do a, a schema compare to, to kind of check that stuff out, but uh, just letting you know that that's a thing. You say, hang on, Chris, hang on. What if on my big fact table, I need to do a refresh of an individual partition? And I say, wait a minute, what the heck's a partition? You explain it to me, you say, okay, what a partition is, is it allows you, you know, that you have a big table and it takes t way too long to, to refresh, right? Like that tables would take four, five, six days to refresh if you just ran, you know, ran it and, but that's too long. You have to refresh every day and you only have a 20 minute window. So what do you do? You set up incremental refreshes on, on your data set so that partitions are created so you can do refreshes a little bit at a given time. Well, I've got an example of that here. Inside of my hybrid AGS data set, my fact internet sales has been partitioned. Well, I can go in and I can take a look at this. And this is very interesting, okay? So if I go in, I right click on fact internet sales and I select partitions. It's gonna show me not just all the partitions I have, but how many records are in the partition and when it was last loaded. Ah, that's a direct query. Ah, ah. Uh, Partitions, the hybrid table? No, oh. oh, that's one, but that's bad. Uh, partitions, the ag table. Oh yeah, factor in sales, direct query, ag is the partition value. So, okay, let's take a look at this bad boy. All right, so as you can see, I've got all of these different partitions that are in the service. You know, what it is, is it's the year of the uh, that you're partitioning by, so in this case, 2020. Quarter one, month two, right? There were 29 records. It was last processed on April 30th of last year, right? The same pattern of a uh, year, quarter, month, follows all the way down. And as you can see, like, hey, Chris, I think this only refreshed that one time. Oh, hang on a second here. If we scroll down, we could start to see that, oh my, look at that. It hasn't just refreshed a singular time, but I had a partition strategy where I was refreshing the last three months. So you could see that, or it's the last two months. I've got, uh, oh, I'm not actually sure what my partition strategy is, but you can see that I've got certain partitions that are refreshing regularly. And then I've got other refresh, partitions that haven't been refreshed in a while, right? And this all has to do with my partition strategy and look up the, the videos on, on how you could create incremental refreshes for settings on that. Um, uh, but in this case, let's say, you know, this is where I, I'm doing my refreshes and these are being kept up to the date, right? This, you know, January and February of this year are up to date, we're good to go. But hey, what happens if there's an update to an an old quarter, an old period, and it's causing uh, you know issues because there was something in April of last year or April of 2020 uh, that was changed that needs to be updated. Well, in the Power BI service, your SOL, 
but with XMLA endpoints, you can go in and you can reprocess this. So, okay, so I, what I can do exactly like I did before is I can multi-select what I want to process. So in this case, let's say I wanna process all of these, these records. I can select them by holding down the control key, then clicking on process. Now, again, we're gonna get prompted with a GUI that can do my refresh, or I can script it out. What do we like to do? We like to script it out. So I click on script. I'm gonna close the stuff out, cancel, uh, cancel. And now let's go in and let's take a look at what this has. Now I've got, oh, I screwed up. I've got automatic refresh and here's all my uh, partitions I want uh, updated. So it's the database hybrid AGs, the table is, BW Factor Net Sales Ag and the partition name that I'm refreshing. Oh, but I don't want these to be an automatic refresh. I want this to be a full refresh. Well, because I've scripted this out, I realized that, oh, this is my error and I reviewed my code. I can now change this before I hit execute and, uh, you know, stop from having to wait for that GUID to respond. Uh, and I guarantee you, if you ever click OK and like you make a mistake, that GUID can take a little while to interact with, uh, and it can run through like the entire load process of a given table. So you definitely don't want to do this. This is a much easier way to go in and make sure that everything you have is set up correctly. So um, I'm not going to hit F5 because or execute because I want to leave this as is. But this is how you can refresh many different partitions all at the same time. Okay, Dax, uh, I hope you found this useful. I hope you found something interesting and new that you didn't know about how you can do pew, 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 targeted refreshes. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong camera. Pew, 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 targeted refreshes uh, of your Power BI data sets. This is super, super powerful and useful. Uh, it, it's something I use every single day when I'm doing development in Power BI. You should be doing it too. If you have questions, leave them down below. If you like this content, hey, I want to hear from you. What other content do you want to hear? Let me know. You know, leave a message down below. Heck, hit one just so that you know I, I know you're listening. Uh, the more comments I get, the better it is for the channel. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, so thank you guys so very much. You guys have a great day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.